pretty much every single desktop environment comes with some sort of terminal. And these terminals will do what a terminal needs to do. I'm not a big fan of the GNOME terminal, but it's good enough. But these terminals are by no means the best terminals out there. And if you have a very terminal heavy workflow, there are some better ones I would suggest actually using. I can't tell you which ones are the best, but I can certainly offer my suggestions. So the first terminal we have is Kitty. Now, the best way to describe Kitty in my eyes is sort of like the apple of terminals. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. What I mean is there is a lot of things made for the Kitty ecosystem that only work on Kitty. And this would be a bad thing if nobody used the terminals because there wouldn't be anything in this ecosystem, but it is a really popular terminal. So Kitty has a Python plugin or module system, whatever you want to call it, called Kittens. And this system is used to make various integrations to add fun things into the application. For example, here is a GPU accelerated dock panel for your desktop if you want to make your terminal part of your dock. Here is a Unicode input system, and here is a diff system. Now, one interesting aspect is a lot of these things you can do in other terminals. For example, you can have a diff system like this, you can have Unicode input like this. Maybe the dock is a little bit harder, but most of the other kittens are fairly similar in this way. But the difference in the case of Kitty is those things are running in your shell, whereas this is a plugin directly for the terminal. So theoretically, it should be more performant in the case of well-written plugin. Now, much like another terminal on this list, this is a GPU accelerated terminal. Now, you might be saying, why would you add that feature into a terminal? What is there in a terminal that you want to GPU accelerate? And if you use mainly older applications where all they display is basic text, there's no reason. It has functionally no difference. But if you are using many modern applications that do have a lot more rendering going on, they are more frequently updating the screen, maybe in the case of Kitty, they're actually rendering images on the screen. In that case, doing that on the GPU actually can provide some benefit in many of those applications. As a global thing for all applications, it's kind of difficult to measure the amount of difference, but what I can say is it certainly feels snappier in cases where it does make sense. Now, one important thing for many advanced terminals is configuration, and Kitty is definitely not slacking in that. It has a config file that is over 2,000 lines long. That doesn't mean there is 2,000 separate options. You can probably see it right now. There is a lot of documentation for a lot of the things you might want to do. A lot of the things in here are commented out. Don't think that everything in here is documentation, but above every single one of the options that is available, there is an explanation of how to use it, the values that it takes, what it actually does, and all that fun stuff, so you can easily work out how to configure it without reading some sort of external documentation. I really like it when an application embeds its documentation in the config file. It makes it very easy to work with. So if you've been on this channel for a while, you've probably heard me complain about Kitty. That's not because I think it's a bad terminal. Overall, I think it is a really great terminal. It's just the least favorite of the three we're talking about today. So if you want to use it, it's available basically in every distro's repos, and it's also available on macOS if you wanna go and use it there, and there is an Apple Silicon version as well. Now the second terminal we have is a terminal that when you first download it, it's absolute garbage. And it's a terminal that is not for most people, but if you want to put the effort into it, I think it is an absolutely amazing experience. That terminal is ST, otherwise known as the simple or suckless terminal. Out of the box, it is a terminal. It loads a shell, it supports input, it shows output, and that's basically it. It doesn't have any of the luxury to expect to be there with any sort of modern shell. It doesn't support scroll back, it doesn't have tabbing. If you like having like a split view sort of thing, it doesn't support that either. It is the most basic of basic terminals, and that is what makes ST so great. 
So like most SOCKLESS applications, it revolves around patching the source code. So by using ST, you're effectively maintaining your own fork of the application. Sure, there are pre-configured versions that do exist, but that sort of defeats the whole point of using ST. So any features that you don't want in ST never have to be added to the code base. You're not just disabling them and then still having the code sitting around. So from my experience, if you want ST to be usable, it requires anywhere from like three to four patches. In my case, I'm using bold is not bright to make it so bold text actually gets rendered. I'm using the scroll back patches, both the regular version with the keyboard and the mouse version, the box draw patch to make it so if you're using the Unicode uh, line symbols, they actually connect together, and also font two to address a bug where ST will crash if you see an emoji. But once again, like with Kitty, because the application is so popular, a lot of the things you may want to add already have been developed. All you need to do is go and download the patch and then apply the patch, and then you're pretty much good to go. Now, the patches are designed around not having any patches enabled. So once you start adding patches, you may not be able to automatically add them. You may need to go and modify them just a slight bit to make them fit with the source code. So this is the other reason why ST is not for most people. If you are not comfortable at least modifying C code to some extent, you should not be using ST. Because like with most of the suckless applications out there, documentation is very limited. By limited, I mean there's no documentation in the source code whatsoever, and you're basically on your own. As much as I would like there to be good documentation, I think the lack of documentation is part of the appeal. This is a terminal that out of the box is nothing, and the code base is an absolute nightmare to work with. But you can go and modify this terminal as much as you want to make it be the terminal that you want it to be. It is nobody else's terminal. It is just your terminal. It is basically the ultimate hacker's terminal. Also, it has a very slow development cycle because it doesn't really have a ton that needs to be added. So you're not really worried about keeping up the main branch. Also, I never would have suggested you put up with this if ST was not also a lightning fast terminal, which it definitely is. Also, ST, unlike the other two, is only available on Linux. And the final terminal we have is obviously one that I couldn't make this video without talking about. That terminal is Alacrity, and Alacrity is the terminal that I mainly use. In many ways, Alacrity is a lot like Kitty, minus the kittens. So, like with Kitty, this also has a really big config file where every single option is really well explained. It doesn't have anywhere near as many options as Kitty has though, and I don't think that's really a bad thing, because I've been through the Kitty config file, and there's a lot of things in that application that I don't see anybody ever actually changing. Sure, it's great if those options actually are there, but I'm never going to touch them, so I don't really care if those options are exposed or not. Now, because this is available on operating systems besides Linux, there are some options in here that are available only on Linux, and some that are available only on Windows, and anything that is like that is going to be marked as such. One issue with the config file is it makes use of YAML, and YAML is really lightweight for the user, but is fairly touchy to incorrect indentation, like a language such as Python. But one way that Alacrity combats this is by having live config updates. So if I go and move this right here, and then save the file, instantly it tells me there is a problem. But if I don't care, I can just go and hide that, and it's going to let me keep using the application perfectly fine. But every time I go and reopen the application, it's going to say, hey, there is this warning here, you probably should go and fix it. There are so many applications I've seen out there where if you have a broken config file, it just won't let you load the application. Sure, it'll core dump if you open it from a separate terminal, but in this case, it's just saying, yeah, check this out, there is a problem here, go and fix it.
And I mentioned there is a second GPU accelerator terminal in this list, and that terminal is Alacrity. Now, the Kitty devs and the Alacrity devs like to have this weird argument back and forth about which terminal is faster. They'll both show different numbers that indicates that their terminal is the fastest terminal, and it really doesn't matter. Earlier on, I felt like Kitty was noticeably slower, but nowadays, sure, Alacrity feels a touch quicker, but they're basically the same. Back to that live update and warning box for a moment, it's actually really handy every couple of months when some random option in Alacrity gets refactored and the name gets changed or gets moved to a separate section, now you can see, hey, this thing has been deprecated and this is what it needs to be. It's just a really visual indication of when something isn't working exactly the way it should be. I briefly mentioned this earlier, this is supported on both Windows and Linux, and for those fanatics out there, it is written in Rust. I do know that because it is written in Rust, there are issues running Alacrity on older hardware, in which case for those people, Kitty might be a better option. If you are completely undecided on what to use, out of this list, I would say pick Alacrity or Kitty, and if you can't pick one or the other, find a coin, and then flip the coin. Because at the end of the day, they are both really, really good terminals, and once you get used to them, you get used to the way they're configured and some of the weird quirks about them, they're both going to do exactly what you need, and they're going to be better than what ships with GNOME or XFC or anything like that. And this shouldn't need to be said, but everything I've talked about today is my opinion. So if you don't agree with my opinion, that's fine. Go and use whatever you want. Also, all the terminals we covered today are covered from an Xorg perspective. If you're a Wayland user, I am aware there are some really good terminals under Wayland as well, and I will probably do a follow-up video when I eventually get around to using Sway. So let me know your thoughts down below. What terminal is your favorite? What terminal do you run on a daily basis? Or maybe you never use a terminal and you try to do everything through a GUI. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon. Subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And that's going to be it for me, so I'm out.